السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين أمان يا منيزي مونغو إنفكية حسين نعلي موانا وحسين نوانا وحسين نما صحابة وحسين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to our Muharram program with Sheikh Abdul Jalil from Washington and myself Naima Nanji Please feel free to send your comments or your questions to the number on the screen Sheikh, we have quite a few questions today so we need more time to address this so let me start giving them to you because they're very interesting actually so the first one is uh, somebody has asked uh, salam alaikum jesus was killed by his enemies but not his choice or decision what was the meaning or purpose of his death Rahim. in the name of god the most beneficent the most merciful first of all <clears throat> we as a muslims we don't believe Jesus is killed. We believe that Jesus is still alive, living in heaven. And he will come back to this earth and continue his mission to tell the Christians who he was and what happened and all of that. But what the Quran is saying, according to the Quran in so many places, Allah made it clear that is saying, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ They did not kill him, just Jesus. وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ They did not crucify him. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ Allah said, what happened was, he was taken, Allah took the image of Jesus and put on one of them who end up being killed in the name of Jesus. But Jesus himself is still alive that Allah tells us, بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah said, I took him to myself. So in our belief, Jesus is still alive and will come before the end of the world to come and make it clear what his messages are to the Christians and the world and what is right and wrong in terms of his message that he brought, whether he's a son of God or he's not a son of God, he's going to make that clarification. Then after that, he will die like anybody else. So the bottom line is, we as a Muslims, we don't believe that Jesus is dead. We believe that he's still alive and he will come at the end of the world and, and he come at the end before the end of the world. Okay. Yes. And then second question is, who is Mahdi? And how is he related to the Prophet? Right. Mahdi alayhi salam, Imam al-Hujjah alayhi salam, is a grandson of the Prophet. You know, the prophet mentioned that he has 12 successors. And what I'm saying, you can find it in all the books. One of them is Sayyid Bukhari. There is a chapter called Bab Khulafa on Nabi, which is the successors of the prophet. And he mentioned that the prophet says, لا يقوم هذا الأمر ما مر فيهم إثني عشر خليفة. That the world will not come to an end until 12 successes come through. Now, in Sahil Bukhari, he didn't mention the names of those 12 successes, but he just mentioned the word 12. And he says, وَكُلُّهُمْ مِنْ Quraysh. All the 12 are from the family of Quraysh, which is the tribe of the Prophet. Now, in some other narrations, like in Tafsir, the Prophet mentioned one by one, right? That the Prophet says, the first person who will be my caliph after me is Imam Ali alayhi salam. Then after Imam Ali, then his son will be the next one. It's called Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam. After Imam al-Hassan, then the next one will be another grandson of the Prophet, which is a brother to Imam al-Hassan, which is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. After Imam Hussein alayhi salam, his son also comes in, which is Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam. Then after Imam Zain al-Abidin, the next one comes is Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salam. Now after Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, his also son comes after him, it's Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. After Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, then his son also comes, which is Imam Musa al-Kadhim alayhi salam. After Imam Musa al-Kadhim, then his son also takes place, which is Imam Muhammad al-Jawad. After Imam Muhammad al-Jawad, 
Then another Imam, which is Imam Ali al Hadi alayhi salam. After Imam al Hadi alayhi salam, then Imam al Hassan al Askari, which is the 11th one. After Imam al Hassan al Askari, the last one is Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam. Right. So Imam al Mahdi is the grandson of the Prophet in these 12 generations. Because Imam al Hassan is the first generation. And then you go, Imam Ali is the first, then second, Hassan, and then the list go on to Imam al-Mahdi. So Imam Mahdi, alayhi salam, he is the last caliph of the Prophet. And he relates to the Prophet as the grandson of the Prophet. Because all of those Imams that we just mentioned, they all mother is Fatima, alayhi salam, which happened to be a daughter to the Prophet. Right? So, and the Prophet says, all the nations, everybody, their grandsons come through their sons, right? Except me. My grandchildren comes through my daughter, which is Zahra alayhi salam. And Zahra has Hassan and Hussein. And then Imam Hussein also had Imam Zayn al Abidin. And then the list goes on. So Imam Mahdi is the last caliph of the Prophet, the last Imam. And he relates to the Prophet as the last grandson of the Prophet who will inherit the caliphate after the Prophet. Okay, mashallah. Third one, third question is, Assalamu alaikum. Why don't Shia follow the caliphates of the Prophet from Abu Bakr to Uthman? Good. Now, the answer to this is this. You know, Islam is not about choices. Islam is more about obedience. In Islam, I cannot say, I'm going to pray Zuhur Raka'a, five Raka'a. We know Zuhur is four Raka'a. I cannot say, I love Allah so much, so I'm going to make it six. Unless I don't want it. Because what I want is what I told you. And for you to be a true servant, you have to follow exactly what my order is. All right? Now, Allah tells me to pray Fajr, two rakah. I say to Allah, I love you so much. So in my, because of my love, I'm going to make Fajr ten rakah. Unless I don't want it. Right? Because... You being submissive to Allah is to follow exactly the order that Allah told you to. Now, if that is clear, we come to Islam. We say Islam is not my choice to say this should be the leader, should this cannot be the leader. No. Allah, the religion belongs to Allah. And he set up who to become what. For example, did anybody choose the Prophet Muhammad to be the Prophet? No. Who chose him? Allah. Did anybody choose Prophet Isa to become prophet? No. Who chose him? Allah. Right? Now, to become successor of the prophet, it has to come from two channels, not more. One, either from Allah. Because sometimes Allah chooses the prophet and he chooses the successor too. I'll give an example from the Quran. When Allah chose Moses, Prophet Musa, to become a prophet, Prophet Musa asked Allah, I need a caliph, successor. Right? Then Allah says, your brother Harun will be your successor. Now, there is the prophet and the successor. Both were chosen by whom? By Allah. Good. Now, a second, what you call option is, if Allah didn't choose, Allah can let the prophet to choose who is the next prophet, or who is the next caliph. All right? Now, when we come, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the prophet in many occasions, not one, not two, not three. Allah appointed the next caliph of the Prophet in many places. I'll give you one example from the Quran. When Allah sent the ayat al-Indhar, وَأَنذِرْ أَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ On that day, Allah told the Prophet to choose his successor. And it's mentioned in the history. You check Tariq ibn Hisham, one of the great scholars. He wrote in that, that on that day, the Prophet asked his family, and there were 40 of his relatives, Abu Talib was there, Abu Lahab was, Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab was there, and Imam Ali was there, and other, and other family relatives. Then he asked them and told them, I brought you the best thing that anybody can bring for his family. What is it? I brought you Islam. And I want someone among you to help me and be my brother, my successor, and my caliphate. Who is willing to be? Only Imam Ali raised his son. Then the rest said, okay, sit down. Then he said again. Nobody except Imam Ali. The third time, except Imam Ali. Then the Prophet says, Ya Ali, from today, you are my successor. 
you are my caliph. That's the first time he started this mission publicly. Right? So the prophet was very clear in appointing who is his successor. And it's very common sense that today, every country that you go, when somebody is declared their candidate to become president, they always choose what? The vice president. Every country that you go, right? From the one, the prophet chose his caliph, which is Imam Ali. Now, you come at the end of his life, right? Because I gave you one example in the beginning of his mission. Now, the end of his mission, three months before the prophet's death, in Hajjat al-Wada, again, Allah sent him an, an order telling him to put, uh, to announce and declare his successor. See, the first one that he declared was just a family. Now, the last, uh, what do you call, the last gathering was the biggest gathering in the life of the prophet time, which the narration says there were almost 100,000 Muslims present on that day. Because that was the year that the prophet declared that he's going to Hajj, and people came from Sham, people came from Egypt, came from Yemen, and all, all across the world. In that moment, when they were going back at a place called Ghadir Khum, he stopped all of the almost 100,000 people. And he said, in that famous words, Man kuntu mawla, fahada ali mawla. Whoever takes me as his master today, after me, Imam Ali says, Master. The prophet declared that. Right? So, and then three months later, the prophet passed away. Because the incident of Ghadir took place in Dhul Hajj. Dhul Hajj, then Muharram, then at the end of Safar, 28th of Safar, that was when the prophet left this wall. Right? So the prophet already announced who's the successor. So we follow the ones that has been proven to us by the Quran and the Sunnah that the next caliphate after the prophet was Imam Ali. And that's why we follow Imam Ali. Even though, with all the respect to Abu Bakr, with all the respect to Omar, with all the respect to Uthman, because we cannot deny their roles in Islam. They did so much for Islam, and we respect that. But we have to put things according to what the prophet in Allah put. Yes. Right? Today, I cannot say because I love my, my son, so my son should be the imam of the masjid, even if he's not qualified. No, it doesn't work like that. Yes. Right? So according to what has been proven by the Quran and the Sunnah, is that the successor of the Prophet was Imam Ali. We have no any animosity towards Abu Bakr or Umar or Uthman or anybody. We are the followers of Allah and the Prophet. If today, if today, right, Allah is to tell us that Pharaoh is the successor of the Prophet, what do you think you're going to do? Of course we're going to follow that. If that is proven to us, right? Because Islam is not about what I want, what is my desire. It's all about the will and the want of Allah. So based on that, it has been proven that Imam Ali is the successor and that's what we follow. Yes. But this event of Qadir is also in their books, in oh. the Sunni books too. Of course. Isn't it? Yes. They it's, are. You can give the reference for them, for them to look it up. Absolutely. We have in Tafasir, you can take Tafsir al-Kashaf. It's one of the Tafsir of the brothers, al sunnah wal Jama'a. It's one of the great scholars it's called Zamakhshari. In his Tafsir, he quoted this incident. Another reference is the Tafsir Fakhr al-Razi. It's called Tafsir al-Kabir. Fakhr al-Razi is one of the great Sunni scholars too. In his Tafsir, in that verse, Ya ayyuhal Rasul, Ballig ma unzal ilayka min rabbik, he also went through and told the entire event that what happened and what the Prophet said about this caliphate of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Yes, because this will be helpful for their reference. Correct. Yes. Okay, then there's a fourth question. Salaamu alaikum. Why do kids suffer from painless, painful, endless diseases and many times killed at wars disrespectively? Is it inheritance of sins from our ancestors or Allah's choice? Um, the answer is... You know, according to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Teen, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Which means, indeed, we, Allah said, we have created human being in the best shape. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot say, I created human in the best shape and then create a child with disease, deformity and so on and so forth. 
because it doesn't make sense. How can he say, I created human perfectly? And then here we see some people who are born with defect. Some children come with all kinds of diseases. Now, where does this come from? Is it the desire of Allah? Is it the desire of someone else? Now, the answer is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah would never put a person in pain or put him in some kind of tragedies or disease like that. Now, when you see those kind of tragedies that happens, it normally comes from us. How is that? There is a verse in the Quran where Allah says, مَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Whenever tragedy comes in your life, it's because of your own deeds. Our deeds can cause that to happen. Now, let me give you one example. Sometimes we see tsunami happens, right? Now, a lot of time we think Allah's will. No, it's not. When those tsunami, these hurricanes, these volcanoes, you name it, they are because of our actions. How so? And this is an answer coming from our eighth Imam, Imam Radha alayhi salam, where he said, when those tragedies happen, it's a reaction from the earth. Because the earth that we walk on, we live on, we think it doesn't see, it doesn't feel, it doesn't have any life in it. But that, that's not what the Quran says. Quran says, this earth has a life. It feels, it sees. Now, when we sin on this earth, right, lying, killing, you know, doing all kinds of bad, bad things, the earth gets to the point where it becomes too much for the earth. And the earth reacts. And that reaction becomes this natural disaster that we see. So earthquake doesn't happen because Allah wanted it to happen. No, no, no. No, because we have to understand that Allah created this world in a system that it works. It's like the computer. There are everything was set already. If you mess up, if you mess up with one thing in the computer, the whole system affected. Right? Now the same thing when we started to commit certain sins, the earth reacts. And that reacts becomes the result of hurricane. The react becomes sometimes tsunami. The react becomes sometimes, you know, tornado and so on and so forth. But not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So most of the things that happens is coming from our sin and not Allah. Because Allah always says, Ar-Rahman, the most kind, the most merciful. How can he turn and put people in this kind of stuff? Okay, Sheikh, we'll just take a short commercial break because we have a lot of questions to answer to. And then we will be back, yeah? Thank you. Thank you. I always placed my pride in only Hussein. Oh. Whilst others place their pride in trees they would trace. There are only two things that make men better. Neither of them are origin or birthplace. The first is a man's piety and fear of God. Courageous, selfless, living a life of grace. The second is when their ears hear Hussein's name. An ocean of tears begin to stroll down their face. That's all that matters. Not skin and not culture. Not hometown. Not home country. Not color. Not race. No racist stood on Hussein's side on Ashura. And no racist shall ever feel his embrace. Feel his embrace. Oh Hussein. I see you embrace your lover, O oh Hussein, regardless his race or color, O oh Hussein, for you no stranger a stranger. O oh Hussein, I see you embrace your lover, O oh Hussein, regardless his race or color, O oh Hussein, for you no stranger a stranger. I see the day of our Multicolored Kerbala The adopted sons of Fatima They became a world where a slave African And why have the martyred Christian With more than a thousand men They became a city of Hussein's face by John's face His cheek on his cheek he would please a one color and a one race They became, they became, they became No color besides the color of 
belief, no color. Like a branch on leaf, dry leaf, no color. Besides the color of their green. Oh, Hussein, I see you embrace your lover. Oh, Hussein, regardless his race or color. Oh, Hussein, why you no stranger, a stranger. That day. Every color Hussein sheltered Their faith is all that matters What a day by non-Arab, Arab would born No black bit, no racist talk The Ansari fought by the Turk What a day and watching this all they stood good He held out treasures and much more but traded it all and what for? What a day, what a day, what a day! On that day, each man proudly wore their culture. On that day, one not better than the other. On that day, their home country, the hereafter. Welcome back to our program with Sheikh Abdul Jalil from Washington and me Naima Nanji. Please feel free to send your comments or your questions to the number on the screen. Yeah? Okay, so we have one last question which is also very interesting. Uh, why was Imam Has Hussein killed in Karbala by Muslims who were practicing kindness and forgiveness, what we talked about all these days? Yeah. So why would such people, known as Muslims, kill Imam Hussein? Right. There are two things we have to clarify. Because in that question, I would like to elaborate that there are two questions in that question. Yes. Question number one, <clears throat> I think the questioner wants to say, how come we said Islam is all about kindness, and then we yet we see violence, we see bloodshed in other part of the world, especially in the Muslim world, right? So how does that relate to us saying Islam is a religion of kindness when all of this is happening, right? That's one. Question number two, from that same question, how come that Muslims will turn and kill another Muslim for no reason, and especially someone like the grandson of the prophet? It's absolutely something that I think is a logic, makes sense. Question. That question is log logical. No. But the answer is this. Number, number one. We have to understand that in every religion, and I don't care which religion you want to call it, you close your eyes and pick any religion you want. There are always extremists. Any religion. People who associate themselves to that religion and they have a very, very bad views. Bad thinking about that religion. And I'll give you one example. Today, when you go to German, Germany, who are the ones who kill Jews in Germany? Hitler, Nazis. right? Yeah. Hitler, which religion was he practicing? Christianity. Christianity. And why was he killing Jews? In his saying, he was doing the act of Jesus. That's why he killed the Jews. That's what he says. That's Jews. Yes. Okay. Now, I'll give another example. You go to the United States, there is a group of Christians who they call themselves KKK. This KKK, they're a group of Christians. What they do, they have in their mind, in the name of Christianity, they say it's okay to kill immigrants, those who migrate to the United States. It's okay to kill blacks. And they have killed and burned Christians who are blacks because they think in their mind that it's okay to kill any person who's black. It's okay to kill any immigrant as long as you're not white skin. But do you tell me that Jesus this preached this? No ways. Of course not. Yes. <laughs> but they're doing this in the name of Christianity, in the name of Bible, like Hitler and them. And this group that I'm talking about, KKK, they still exist in America. They have their website. They have their activities. They do, and they still maintain the same ideology. 
This is a Christian, right? Now, you and I know that Jesus doesn't stand for that. Yes. But that's what they say, right? Now, you come to the Judaism. There are people also in the Judaism. Also, they have this mentality, right? They think they are the chosen God people. Allah loves them more than anybody. They, it's okay to kill any person on the planet as long as it's not a Jew, right? And God created every human being to serve them, right? This mentality is there for some. But there are some who don't think that way, right? Now, this has nothing, I mean, you and I know that Moses didn't preach that because Moses, when he came, he came to rescue all the Ben Israel, regardless of who you are. Because when they were under the attack of Pharaoh, he came to rescue all of them across the board. That all of you are servants of God and you all are to be protected. Right? So for that matter, today when we see some people in the name of religion, they're killing others, we cannot as ascribe or attach that to their religion. No, because people have agendas when they come to religion, yes. and especially in Islam. Yes. And that's why when you go to the Quran, we have specific chapter that is called Surah Al-Munafiqun, the chapter of hypocrites. You got to understand that even at the time of the Prophet, there were people who came into Islam, not with the good reason, for many reasons. One, some of them came because they wanted to protect their assets because they think if Islam, when Islam comes, if they still kept being Christians or being for example, idol worshippers, their properties might be in jeopardy. So they have to enter Islam, not because they want, because they protect their asset. The people are there. Certain people, they enter in Islam. For other reasons, for example, they enter in Islam so they can get some benefit from Islam. But in their heart, they don't. All of these signs were there in the Quran. And Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا When they meet those who are believers, they tell the believers, we are with you. We believe like you. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ When they go around to their other people, hypocrite, قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ إِنَّا كُنَّا مِنْهُمْ نَسْتَعْزُ They say, oh, we are just mocking them. We're just playing them. Right? These are the companions of the Prophet. They come and pray with the Prophet. They fast with the Prophet. But inside, they are not believers. Okay? So those people, they can come in the name of Islam, but in reality, they are not Muslims. Now, in that line is Yazid who killed Imam Hussein. I can guarantee you with the proof that Yazid was not a Muslim. But he was faking it in the, because he has an agenda. Right? Now, one simple example. He has a poem that he said, and it's a famous. You can check it throughout the history. Like Tariq al-Tabari, Tariq ibn Hisham, or Tariq uh, other historians' books. They mention that after the aftermath of Karbala, he sat on the member and he says, I wish my ancestors who were killed in the battle of Badr at the time of the Prophet, he said, I wish they were Allah. And listen, he says, I wish those ancestors who were killed by the Prophet were alive today. He said, they would have cheered up and be happy with me because of what I did. And then he says, we have killed the noble people's children, which is the prophet, is the noble, and his children are Imam Hussein, we have killed the noble one's children, and we compare the killing of those noble's children with killing of our ancestors, and we found it equal. Which means, the prophet killed my grandfather, I'm killing his grandchildren, and now we equal. And then he said at the end, he said, لَعِبَتْ هَاشِمُ بِالْمُلْقِ Bani Hashim, the child of the Prophet, he said, they have played with this kingdom, leadership. So in his mind, he doesn't believe this is Islam. He said, kingdom, I want to be king. That's what, what this is about. Yes. Right? And then he says, at the end, he says, فَلَا خَبَرٌ جَا There was no, any revelation came from Allah to anybody. وَلَا وَحْيُ النَّزَلِ There was no news. Which means, he doesn't believe in Quran. He doesn't believe in the Prophet message. All of this is just words in his words. Right? How can this person become Muslim? Yeah. This is a man who sat in the crowd and he was asked, he asked people to bring him alcohol. They brought him alcohol as he was drinking alcohol and somebody told him, yeah, Yazid, you know, this alcohol is haram. He said, he said just be quiet. You're telling me alcohol is haram? 
Can you show me anywhere in the Quran Allah says, Woe unto those who drink alcohol. But I can show in the Quran Allah says, Woe unto those who, who pray. That's what he says. Now, this is a man who was leading people. So we cannot call this man as a Muslim. Right? So to say that Muslim killed Muslim, no, no, that's not right. It's non-Muslims killed Muslim. We can make that statement because Muslim is not by word, it's by action. And those actions are not there with Yazid or the, his companions. Okay? So in that sense, to wrap it up, we said, number one, in that case, Muslims were killed by so-called Muslims. I think that's the right term to say. But we cannot, it's not fair to Imam Muslim and his companions to put both of them in the same boat. Because you cannot tell me the killer and the one got killed, they're all good servant of Allah. No, no, it's not gonna be. One of them have to be good, one of them, it's, it, it's, it doesn't even make sense, right? So the right statement is to put it this way. So-called Muslims, which is Yazid and his soldiers, versus real Muslims. The children of the Prophet, where they, they fought, and so-called Muslim said they win, they killed the grandson of the Prophet. I think that's a fair statement. So, to my understanding, Yazid and his soldiers were absolutely not true Muslims. They might say they were, but they are not true Muslims. Yes. So, this is the two things that we have to understand. And the second part is also we have to understand that some people might call themselves or attach themselves to a religion but they are not really in that religion. Following they it. have a gender behind that. Yes. And that agenda is what pushes them, but they use the religion as a shield for their evil agendas. And that's what happened. And we see that today, like I mentioned, among the Christians, like Hitler used the same thing. In the name of Christianity, he killed Jews, right? Which was completely wrong, but he used that because of his evil agenda. He used religion for that matter. And we have people in Islam today also who are doing that. But that has nothing to do with Islam. That is just an evil person doing his evil in the name of religion. But the religion has nothing to do with that evilness. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. We're going to wind up here. Thank you so much, Sheikh, for your time and also for sharing your abundance of knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu ala al Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein. وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين أمان يا منيزي مونغو إنفكية حسين نعلي موانا وحسين نوانا وحسين نما صحابة وحسين